most important uh, victim of uh, this judgment is the is the idea of reservation which had a lot of integrity in the constitution reservation is only a tool for representation if we find a better tool we'll throw reservation into the arabian sea Surprised that the uh, that the majority upheld the uh, the amendment, um, we were hoping to get at least one dissent. We got two dissents, and that speaks volumes for the the uh, independence, openness, and in, you know, professional integrity, and professional quality of uh, the two judges who dissented, because they certainly did not start out you know, having a position on it, but, um, and their own deep sense of understanding of the constitution and of constitutional law, you know, what this judgment really is. I started out uh, in the first, uh, which was not live stream, but in the court, in the, in the very first uh, uh, hearing we had by you know, telling the court that I believe that this is not an ordinary case. It is what I would call the ADM Jabalpur of social justice. And uh, now after the uh, result and reading the three majority judgments, I would say it's the Jalyamwala Bagh of, of social justice. Um, uh, ADM Jabalpur in the sense that it is a judgment that this court will regret for a long time to come and will bring it disgrace for a long time to come. Jalyamwala Bagh in the sense that it has uh, slaughtered many principles of the constitution, many fundamental a fun, fundamental visions of the constitution. And, um, and the most important uh, victim of uh, this judgment is the, is the idea of reservation, which had a lot of integrity in the constitution. Uh, there are now, I think, only about seven references to the word reservation in the constitution. Initially, there was only 16.4 uh, and then the provisions uh, referring to reservations for uh, in, uh, in the parliament and legislature and for Anglo-Indians and minorities. And all these were very tightly meant to, me meant to address problems of lack of representation. And uh, so reservation was seen as a a potentially dangerous tool that conflicts with the idea of equality because it pushes out somebody for, you know and and reserves a seat for someone and to be used very carefully and very for only for the limited purpose of uh, achieving representation and um, and it was brought into 164 it was one of the few cases where dr ambedkar actually directly sort of got into the issue. Uh, otherwise, he was always very, very much of the chair, chairperson role, you know, in the Constituent Assembly, you know, being the last word which everyone accepted. But here he got in and he almost passionately insisted that the 16-4 must provide for reservations for backward classes. <coughs> and also he codified into 16-4, it's one of the only constitutions in the world to my knowledge, the only constitution that I'm aware of. South Africa has taken that idea later, uh, not in the same language, but a little bit reflecting the same idea. But it's the, may, it's the first and the, the only constitution which directly says, uh, codifies the idea that all classes of people shall have adequate representation in the states, the idea of a representative state. So the Supreme Court has said we don't have a right to, rep to reservation. But what they have not recognized, and I hope they will, and I hope I'll have a chance to, uh, to argue this uh, to them, is that they must recognize that we have all classes of the country, social classes, because that was the con context of 164, have a right to adequate representation in the Indian state. So the idea of representative democracy 
as being a fundamental pillar of democracy. Representative government as being a fundamental pillar of democracy has been written into the, codified into the constitution, hardwired into the constitution. And reservation is only a tool for that. So I mentioned to the court and I tell, say it to everyone, reservation is only a tool for representation. If we find a better tool, we'll throw reservation into the Arabian Sea. There is an ambiguity. I did not say this to the court, but I implied there is an ambiguity in the language of 15.6 and 16.6 EWS. What is that ambiguity? Why did Parliament not say, you know, I could not say this in court because Parliament is not before the court, so I can't, but we can say that here. Why did Parliament did, uh, not say in 15.6, 16.6 that we will give reservations to economically weaker sections of socially and educationally forward classes or upper caste? Why did they have to put the convoluted language of other than classes, right? Other than the classes in 15.4 and 16.4 and 16.5, right? For two reasons, I believe. One is to mislead people into thinking that this was meant for, poor, for the poor people. And this convoluted language was so convoluted that most people don't understand. They skip, they just glaze over that. They just say, this is for economically weaker sections. That's, they end there. They don't read, they don't understand for what, what it means to say other than the classes in 15.4, 16.4. Very few people understand that. The other reason uh, that, uh, that, that, they, that they did it was to exclude the OBC SEST. Now, when 16.4 was drafted and put into the constitution, it said backward classes. Backward means backward in representation. That's all it meant. Because that's why the solution is adequate representation. When they said that, there were no human beings called backward classes in, on January 26, 1950. But the constitution said backward classes. So what did it mean? It meant that that was only a criterion that you will give reservations for, to those who don't have adequate representation. It has nothing to do with human beings or classes or groups of people. That came much later. Commission was appointed, criteria were developed, criteria was applied. Right? So therefore, what I argued is, you sh because we are at the level of constitution, you should read other than 15.4, 16.4 as simply saying, that the eligibility criteria for EWS should be other than the eligibility criteria for 15.4 or 16.4. Where does it say in 15.6, 16.6 that you are excluding SCST or OBC? Everyone is assuming that. Where does it say that? Where does the word forward class come in or, or caste come in? It doesn't. So I said you should interpret this other than as referring only to eligibility criteria. What does that mean? It means you can't use the same criteria as for SCBCs or SC or ST. You come up with other criteria. What are those other criteria? I said use the BPL multi, multi-dimensional index criteria. Those are, those are other criteria. So therefore, I believe that the language of 15.6.16.6, I believe then and I still believe, can only be interpreted as referring to, e, to, to EWS as e, today equal to BPL. Not necessarily BPL, but BPL is an identified category of economic weakness based on intellectually accepted, professionally developed criteria, methodology, rationale, based on multidimensional ex, uh, poverty, globally accepted. And therefore, you have that as a ready-made option, like reservations as a tool available to you, not necessarily uh, on that. So economic weaker sections in 15.6.16.6 cannot and does not mean exclusion of, of OBC SEST. That's a gloss given to it dishonestly. If it was really exclusion, they should have written that. They never wrote that. So all it means is that the criteria should be different. Why did you need to refer to 15.4 and 16.4 at all? What's the need? You see, if your intention was to give it to social and educationally forward classes, your first responsibility is to say that explicitly and directly. 
if you want to you know and rather than say other than the classes mentioned are you shy to mention those classes why don't you say other than show, uh, other than sh scheduled caste scheduled tribes and social and educationally backward classes no don't even refer to 154164 you you're, you're making someone read and then interpret and so on and so forth why because you say you're making this uh, not you i mean uh, the the uh, government yeah, the parliament says that they're making this law under 46 46 as i said says you shall speak, uh, take special care of those who are educationally and and uh, and economically uh, weaker sections especially scheduled castes and scheduled tribes and you are saying you're making a law under 46 and excluding scheduled castes and scheduled tribes forget the obcs and you're not mentioning that but why have you allowed those who are not getting reservations to get women's reservation, sports persons reservation, PWD reservation? That's not a disqualification to get AWS. That's not double reservation. It's only OBC SCST reservation that becomes double reservation. Why didn't you then say no one who is entitled to any kind of reservation will get AWS? Why are you only picking out SCST? This uh, OBC reservation and say if you are not entitled to that you will you will not get EWS. So this is this is not for people who don't get reservation. It is very much for people who are entitled to reservation. Plenty of other reservation, domiciliary reservation, children of uh, officials reservation, so many kinds of reservation. It simply says you cannot be from the lower castes. So you know that's that's the only that's that's all it says. So. Number one, what about creamy layer of ex uh, those who are excluded from creamy layer from OBC? They are also affected by this 50% reduction. See, the, the creamy layer excluded from OBC can only be in the 50% open quota. You are taking 10% away and giving it only to social and educationally forward classes? 50% uh, It's not, it that's is, what I'm telling you. It is the underserved category. Yes. It's a secular, in fact, uh, uh, exactly. It is uh, uh, not even religion based. Yeah, it is not. So, SCBC is not religion based. You got every religion. I read out the criteria. You got people from the Brahmin Varna, Vaishya Varna, Kshatriya Varna. It's a it's a category that unites people across Varna, Jati, religion, region. Um, on the, but those who don't have representation, communities that don't, don't have representation. It's one of the most successful and powerful uniting uh, concepts in India since independence. That you know, across the country people say, okay, we are backward class, we, we are unrepresented classes. We are unrepresented classes, right? So they're fighting for representation. So yes, open category is every, anyone, everyone. But then why do you why do you express concern, not express concern about the forward, the creamy layer of the backward classes? And the schedule, uh, schedule class, not yet, uh, they don't have creamy layer as of yet, but the creamy layer of the backward classes. They are also losing the 10%, but their own communities are not benefiting. So this is just full of anomalies, full of ano anomalies. And that's because you're trying to, in, to, you're struggling to do what you really want to do. What you really want to do is to create a carved out space for the upper caste. And, and so you're saying other than this thing, 10% mine. No, it's, see, you should, you, 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 and you cannot do this. You, cannot, you ca cannot do what you really want to do. So you're struggling with it. So what I suggested, ma'am, was if you simply say that this is a different set of criteria, and then you open up to anyone who fits in that criteria, regardless of, of you, you accept that those who are deprived and the multidimensional poverty indicators take into account social deprivation also in a different way. So any group that is in a BP, as a group BPL, not individuals BPL, as a group that is BPL, in my view, deserves representation. So you can bring it within the concept of representation, right, and say, the poor also, you are expanding the concept of uh, representation because we are undergoing a lot of change in our uh, social identity and social groups. You know, a lot of change in, 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 with, the, with all the cha economic and technological changes taking place. So we may also see we can treat them as, a, as a working class from a Marxist point of view and give representation to the working class. In fact, I've been asking my, my, my own state uh, government people 
You are supposed to be a left party and you are supposed to be a, a working class party. Why don't you implement EWS? I have gone to the High Court of Kerala and filed a case for this. Why don't you give EWS in Kerala to the working class? Why are you implementing EWS in Kerala the same way as Gujarat is implementing EWS? In fact, worse, the government of Kerala issued a government order giving the list of eligible categories of EWS and on top it is written Jati, caste, the list of castes. So I said, you should have said as a left government, we are going to give it only to working class. You want to challenge it in the Supreme Court, go and challenge it in the Supreme Court. For us, economic weaker section means working class.